weekly tier list where I rate the most recent fall 2024 animes and judge it based on how much I enjoyed it. The cutoff is today or Sunday. So today's episode of Talker, even though we just watched it, does not count. I'm going to count last Monday stuff up till Sunday. First up, Dragon Ball Daima. I think this shit is incredibly mid. Like, do not let your bias of nostalgia get in the way from like objectively observing and experiencing this anime. It looks good. The animation is crisp. Art style is amazing. Soundtrack, pretty nice. Voice acting, it's all there. But what the fuck is happening, bro? Three episodes have happened. The pacing is dog shit garbage. You expect people to actually care about the bar fight? It looked good. But like, are you serious? You think people care about a bar fight? It is pretty interesting how they're doing extra lore and world building regarding Daima, right? Regions 1, 2, 3, different ways of motor transport, stuff like that is fine. And Glorio is cool. I like his whole personality, the attitude. But like, let's not get it twisted. You cannot tell me that you're watching Daima and saying it's peak. This shit is a fucking snooze fest. Everyone is waiting for it to actually like pop off. No one actually watches Dragon Ball for the world building. Maybe some does, but the majority of the audience doesn't care. They just want the Oonga Boonga hype fights and nothing of that has really happened. It's just fucking mid right now. We're, we're literally just waiting. I'm just waiting for something to actually happen. Next up, Kimi no Mei-sama dropped. It's kind of interesting how a show like this, which is objectively, like, it looks good, yet because nothing happens again, people don't give a fuck. Usually, rom-com, chill slice of life, waifu girls, just chilling, those stories do well. But I am shocked that, like, Maid failed. It is, like, pretty mind-blowing. And, like, just because, like, you know, people are gonna say, no! One more episode mates you know it showed up to the fucking school as a transfer student listen once you've already like if the earlier episodes do well there is no signal that the future episodes are going to do well i'm just actually shocked that like this did that bad i thought it was a pretty fun anime but people just don't seem to give a fuck and if you think about it it is this kind of trauma dumping and i i that might be the issue it's kind of like glorifying uh, this trauma. This girl just has so much fucking baggage and we're trying to like treat her well, but something about that might not sit well with the audience. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to theorize on why it did so bad despite it being a show that I would imagine do pretty well, but you voted with your viewership. You don't give a fuck about this. Dropped. Now, let's talk about Appraisal Isekai also didn't get an anime episode because there was Japanese general elections that's on a hiatus. In terms of what should be dropped in an objective like viewership basis, it's this too. It's that. Like low-key Tower of God, kind of low-key, like a little bit. Oddly enough, this is kind of doing better. What else is doing really bad? That's pretty much it. Well, like, like Appraisal Lisa, I'm not going to drop it. I'm not going to drop it. It's just, I guess the show is a bit too, it's not even generic though. It's pretty interesting how they're collecting, you know, the main character isn't OP and everyone else around is, and there's like great world building and diplomacy and politics happening. And now it's the actual war stuff happening yet. People just don't give a fuck because I guess they didn't even watch season one. So it's, it sucks. It's, it's unfortunate that this show is not getting the recognition it deserves, but like, not dropping just yet, but just be aware that, like, of these shows that performs and doesn't perform, this shit is, like, dead last. Let's talk about Loner Isekai. I think that Loner Isekai was a good episode. I don't think it was the best episode. It was just getting to the town and the whole running gag of my man wants to leave, but he can't fucking leave. The class rep is, hey, I'm blowing my whistle. Tweet, tweet. You can't leave. It's like, bitch, let me fucking leave. And then as soon as we leave, he gets caught and we're back. He didn't even get caught though. He's like saving this like new royal girl and like shit talk the village. And it turns out that she's basically the daughter of like the village head. And we're like, oops, sorry. It was a good episode. It was, it was like a good episode. Just chill. Next up. Dandaran goes all the way to the peak. 
My fucking goodness, this show is fucking cooking, man. Dun da dun, bro. It's just been peak, 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 peak. I think the episode before might have been a little bit slower as we're just kind of chilling and introducing the grandma and we're just kind of, it's, it's, it's a low-key like setup episode, but even that's all good. Dun da dun, definitely giving me hope that when people actually care, when people actually care about art and they're not just trying to take the quick route of pickpocketing money into their wallets and give a shit adaptation and leave. It's so nice what, you know, anime can be when the right amount of dedication has been poured into it. Dandaran, fucking unreal, bro. It's just the whole episode was nonstop. Just, just shit popping off. The whole running scenes. The whole train scenes, even like the ingenuity of Momo thinking about how to get around these circumstances using her Esper powers in very creative ways. Big brain, granny looking so sick the moment. Like when we got on the train, my brain was like, what's happening here? This is already crazy. Like I'm like, this is crazy. Like we, we took the train because, you know, Okadun can't run anymore. And Turbo Baba is still chasing. It's like, what's going to happen? Oh, shit. We're about to cross the zone of when our Baba has the powers. Boom. Handles it. And there was even like a nice little um closure for the turbo baba as you know the reason that she was obsessed with taking dudes weenies it wasn't just like random things for the fun and shits and giggles it's that like she was collecting these like a lot of people got graped a lot of the girls got graped and you know just terrible things happened and the granny kind of like gave them like a place of respite like a resting in peace kind of deal right and that's why she was also going for the dude weenies. There was, it, it was like a little little story to kind of humanize Turbo Baba beyond just being a crazy monster. I wonder why the aliens, though, are after the bananas. I thought that bananas and weenies, there's like some kind of connection. But since Turbo Baba has her own like lore regarding it, I don't think there really is a connection. But there still is definitely a connection between the aliens and <clears throat> the supernatural in the way that they were portrayed in that sumo episode and how our talisman kind of worked. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I ain't gonna lie. Goodbye, Dragon Life? Maybe I'm crazy for putting it in great. Am I crazy? It might be just good. I enjoyed it more than Loner, though. I'm gonna put it in great. I feel like Loner... Dude, this show is actually kind of cooking. It, 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 I feel like it should be like the top of good or like in here, but this show is actually cooking. The, I mean, the first episode wasn't bad. It was just, okay, we're getting set up to this world. The animation looks pretty good. The soundtrack is fucking amazing. And I, I guess most of the content revolves around Lamia being discriminated against and Doran kind of being with her and protecting her, right? I like the whole twist of, you know, Goda being actually a good person. I'm like, oh man, I'm sorry about that. And then there was the backstory of the girl who was like obsessed with beauty. So she was taking on different, like she was like killing different people and wearing their skin and customizing her face and shit like that. It is definitely not the best anime, but in terms of like enjoyment overall, it's very fun to watch. I'm, I'm glad that I stuck around with it. I hope it continues to do better and better. Next up. Let's talk about Blue Lock. I... Oh, I, I... I can't put it in great. I... It was a good episode, though. It was genuinely a good episode. And... If you... Like, if you're gonna tell me that you don't see a difference in this episode compared to the previous, you are literally just a... You are so beyond biased. You're not even looking at the show from an objective perspective. It is actually way better. And the theories around why it got better, some people are saying because the main character, Isagi, the way that he is portrayed, the amount of monologue and yapping during the heat of the moment creates these jagged, you know, um, gaps in animation where Apa Studios can take advantage of their PNG lock meta, right? I, I think that his absence in this episode may have played a role. Other people are joking about how Rayo's daddy... <laughs> Rayo basically called his daddy and said, Dad, you know, the studio needs more fucking money. Please budget them. And my personal conspiracy theory with this is... 
Remember Nagi Rail Movie? That movie is a big project that 8-Bit Studios also worked on. Think about what the episode was all about. Reo. I straight up think they cared a little bit more about this in order to promote the fucking movie. Yup, that's my conspiracy theory. It's definitely giving me hope that it can be better. And by U20, I hope that I can place Blue Lock here, if not here. It's definitely giving us Copium. But remember, there's no point always being a fucking Doomer. Because that's a fucking loser's mindset. You should always hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And on another topic, right? Usually, Tower of God and Blue Lock are both just fucking mids, right? Tower of God low-key cooking. Now, there wasn't hype animation or fights happening. And most of the good Tower of God episodes is when there is no fights because they can't fucking do fights. But rather, when the core roster of characters that we care about starts interacting, it's nice. Rat coming back, having conversation with Blue Turtle, reminding us of all the things that happened in Season 1. A Blue Turtle always ruminating and being indecisive, yet he's the intelligent one. And Rack being the quote-unquote unintelligent alligator, always knowing what to do because instinctively his heart knows what to do and kind of like showing Blue Turtle away. It's nice. It's beautiful. Not only that, they hyped up the uh, overall like setting the stage of the workshop battle and Dorsey's on TV, everyone's fucking glazing, you know, there's the Fog Slayer, Zahad Princess, and the strongest E-rank Mad Dog, right? Stuff like that gets me really hyped. This whole tournament setting is truly peak, but can they actually deliver when the episodes matter? We will be carefully following it, but thank God it was better this time. Now, 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 now. I'm gonna put Ari Fureta in peak. I don't care. Fuck you. It is truly like like last episode, and and we haven't watched today's episode just yet. Last episode, bro. Holy shit! Knowing like like Bunny Clan, like like Shea's dad being like, "Come on, torture me harder, pussy. What are you doing, pussy?" <laughs> All that shit's so funny. The bunny clan is just wilding out. The Power Ranger outfit. Shizuku just wanting to be cute. Oh my god. It's Ari Fureta is like. I, I think that Ari Fureta and ReZero could be considered kind of like polar opposites in the way that they handle themselves. ReZero is a very, very serious, dramatic anime, right? It takes itself incredibly serious, and it does it very well. But sometimes, it feels suffocating. I need some different types of foods, you know? If you're always eating pepperoni pizza, you're gonna get fucking tired of it. You need some diversity. In comes Ari Furata, and then Isekai, that does not take itself serious. Yes, there can be serious moments, but I think right now, Ari Furata is fucking peaking. Season 3 has been amazing, because they kind of know what they are. It's a trashy Isekai. It's a trashy harem Isekai. Power fantasy, and they know it, and they play into it. And having these non-serious jokes happening with the Power Ranger shit and the bunny clan popping off. It's just a, such a fun, comfortable, relaxing watch. I love it, dude. And they're really setting up the stage for this Empire arc, which is gonna be like so fucking good. You know we're gonna be dunking on their asses, right? So fantastic episode. If you're not watching Ari Fureta, I don't blame you, considering what happened in Season 1 and Season 2, but the real ones that stuck around are watching, yeah, we, we're fucking eating, man. We are fucking eating. Next up! Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Orba. Low key mid? No. I. They're building up the characterization of Oxy. How he refuses to look at the sky because he's so terrified of how the sky looks down on him. It's, 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 it's too deep for me. Honestly. What I fucking hate about this show is the night scenes. I can't see shit. Why the fuck are like what, don't even animate. Just make it just pitch black. Don't even show me just voice act, bro. It's like I'm listening to a fucking audiobook. The the night scenes are so stupid. I hate it. There's ways to make it actually visible. Are you doing this for DVD blue later? You know, better enhancements? I don't really know. His friend Grass dying was also so fucking stupid. 
maybe because of the way that it was portrayed because it's like oh no he's falling off but bro he could have reached literally one it was like literally next to him the wall was next to him apparently the manga was way different right the way it was handled on the anime was almost comical because it's like bro could have literally just reached out to the wall and survived but in the source material apparently it was different we're getting into this new arc where the main character has changed and we're trying to find out how we're going to you know defy the heavens grass kind of gives him more what does he do? He kind of tells him, like, hey, one day maybe you'll be able to kind of look at the heavens too, right? Instead of always fixating on, you know, heaven's the best thing and you're so, you know, disgusted of the world, then why are you right now afraid of death, right? If you're so afraid of death, then that kind of contradicts your whole thing of, like, the heavens the only thing that matters. So I'm sure that's going to play into a part in this new guy, Badeni or Baldeni, right? The blonde hair guy with the ball spot. Uh, it's looking like he's going to be a very important character. Novak is also just chilling. We got away. We did kind of almost fight. I love whenever Novak is... Is it Novik or Novak? I think it's... I forget. One, one of the fuck... It's, Novik is in Tower of God. Novak is, I think, um, Orb. Novak is, like, contemplating of, like, Ah, oh, shit. Can I kill this guy? What does the rules say? It's up to my justice? Ah, oh, shit. This is too much for me. I, I love how, like, nonchalant and casual he is. He's pretty much, like, the best part of Orb for me sometimes. But overall, it's just a good episode. Just a good episode. Next up... Villainous? Um, was it low-key great? I mean, we finally see Alicia pop off, be the villainous that she is, shit talk, like she walks up to the whole tea party of the main heroine and like 10 fucking dudes and she just shit talks them. I loved it. Her logic was also factually correct. Naive idealist versus pragmatic realist shitting on her and the clash of ideals and this fucking pedo duke prince guy just being like <laughs> That's my pre-order girl. It's just like ooh, that guy's fucking weird, but there are some funny moments to be had I, I think it was a great episode overall Next up Strange grief most recent episode I mean, we watched it yesterday, right? Tino got fucked up by Liz. Liz is crazy. We got to see the battle against Mark. Um, and it kind of set up. I, I think that it should be like here. Nothing really. It's not supposed to be a pop off episode. It's kind of just like setting stuff up for the next arc, right? I think that it was like pretty top of good or maybe even up here. I'm not sure. Maybe it should be here. Maybe. Maybe it should be. They were kind of setting up this stuff with the slime being gone. Who knows? The amount of... The amount of misdirections and like the glaze is honestly getting kind of funny. I was more or less pissed on how Atina was blindly fucking just listening to Cry and just putting her party in danger. So that kind of like blindfolded glaze pissed me off the previous episode. But this recent one where like, for example, we're on a date and Liz just looks at a dude, and he's like, Oh my god, that guy's staring at us. I got you. And it's like, what? Chill the fuck out. But it turns out he actually was like a secret spy. Shit like that's pretty funny. It, it, it is pretty funny. I'm gonna put it in great. It had a, a lot of like great animation too. The fight scenes are pretty crisp. Definitely something that this anime can't fucking do just yet. But prove to me, come on. Prove to me that you can do it in the workshop battle. Next up. If the animation was better, I would put it here. I would genuinely put this anime at peak if the animation could- If they could actually show us the fights rather than just showing us JRPG hit marks and off-screening it, you know? I'm gonna put it here for now, though. The entertainment value I get from this show thanks to Margulis, the leader of the Inazuma Tsurugi, the Lightning Blades. Oh, it's so fucking funny, bro. It's genuinely hilarious. I think a lot of people don't like the main character because of how kind he is. I genuinely don't give a fuck about the main character. Laust does not matter to me. Narsena does not matter to me. I only watch this for the dumbass moments that Margulis has created. And that has been the peak source of content. Now, regarding the actual plot, it's looking like Laust is some sort of Oni monster hybrid human. 
there is this dude who is like worried about Laos's existence in our village, right? The guy that's in this closing encapsulated is basically the old guy who's sitting on a chair that talked to one of the guild leaders, right? Talking about how Laos is still here and that's like a bad thing. So they're kind of building something. I don't know what Laos really is, but uh, there's more to it than meets the eye. So there's some mystery there, but Margulis and Sabrina or whatever her name. Dude, those two remind me of uh, the two pairs that we saw in level two cheat, chilling in another world. <laughs> the fake hero and the gold digger who wasn't actually a gold digger, just going off and doing stupid shit like Bonnie and Clyde shit. Like that trope, I love. I'm starting to realize that kind of trope has always made me laugh and it just created great content. So thank you, Margulis. I hope to see you back. Next up. Damachi is going to go to the peak. Not even ReZero can contest Damachi. Da da ReZero is going to be between Damachi and Dandara. I'm just going to let you know right now. If you don't know, you don't know. But for the people who do know, the Seer Freya plot twist, oh my god, bro. I was dying laughing. Like, I genuinely was laughing for like 10 minutes straight, just mass hysteria. Because of the idea that a goddess was fucking flipping burgers for five seasons. <laughs> Trying to get Bell that image. And again, it's not just any goddess, it's Freya. Like, like, of course, we've seen Hestia do it, but that's not the same personality. It's someone as cool and serious and, and, and omnipotent like Freya flipping burgers. That image in my head just fucking killed me. And JC Stab does go out of its way to really give such next level polish to Damachi. If you ain't watching Damachi Season 5, you are fucking missing out. Oh my god. It's just so sad that a lot of people have forgotten about this show. You know how there's multiple seasons going on happening for almost a fucking decade long. People are gonna forget, right? A lot of new people coming in. They don't even know what the fuck Damachi is. They're just a bunch of new fucking anime watchers that's enjoying Dan Dan and that's great. But I implore you, if you haven't watched Damachi, you should fucking check it out. Next up, Mao 2099. The Demon Lord could not get a job, so he decided to be a fucking streamer. Probably top of good, if not here. Did it really pop off? I mean, the whole like streaming aspect of it was funny. He low-key got carried hard because of his networking. His networking, aka his hacker girl doing all the fucking advertisements and plugs is what got him from like a zero viewer to like a high viewer. I mean, it doesn't matter if you get a shout out. Like there's been so many people who have collaborated with let's say Kai Sinet or other people that's huge, right? And sure, you can get all the shout outs from top influencers and they will then go to your channel. But if you have no content, if you're boring, that shit dies off real quick. The fact that, you know, our demon Lord was able to hold on to that audience, speaks volumes to his content. It was pretty fun. It, it was pretty fun. I'm, I don't think that it was anything crazy, but it was like a fun, way of our demon lord adapting to the civilization a little bit more plot with the hero and how he views this world he seems to be very depressed about how the hero doesn't need to exist anymore and bro got eternal youth and he just kind of he's just a bum now but maybe we can do a collab stream with the hero i don't know how they're working this guy in but it was a it was an entertaining episode next up the talker episode i think goes great it was a heart-touching episode in more than one way. In the first way of Arma literally probably ripping out people's hearts because she a fucking demon. And then the other side of the heartfelt is how she wasted her entire life dedicating herself to be the best assassin ever and then getting kicked out of her assassin's guild because assassin's guild is becoming more corpo and Arma is being noticed as an insane person who is a brand risk and advertiser is going to pull out. She gets kicked out. She has no purpose in life. But there is Noel, who is the existence that kind of like validates her own, I guess. It was a nice episode. There was also peak talking moments. We literally shit on a girl's parents where the girl loved us. Like, like, and, and the parents deserved it. I loved how the yapping moments are more hyped in the battle scenes. And it's a solid anime. And finally... The most overrated garbage. I can't believe motherfuckers are still glazing this garbage isekai when, you know, 
Arifurata exists. I can't believe you watched this shit, bro. Bunch of yapping, cringe main character, bullshit anime. What do you see? Bunch of re-zero retards, man. Hate this show. Genuinely hate this show. I don't. There's, there's probably no tourist actually watching this. It'd be really funny if people actually get mad at what I said, because, like, you have no idea what the fuck we're about. And as soon as you check out my ReZero playlist, there's almost 300 fucking videos. There's, I don't think there's anyone on YouTube right now that's put in the amount of dedication that I have towards ReZero in the last three months. Genuinely. If we count the last three months only. Not even during when, like, you know, 2016, 2020. No, no, no. I'm talking about the last three months of ReZero, bro. I'm fucking dominating this shit. Goes in between. I think that it was a phenomenal episode. I think that the fight scenes were so hype. Cut content told us that we missed out on Capella breathing down flame attacks because White Fox probably didn't want to animate that. And there was some other shit going on with Julius attacking Capella. But overall, to me, it just looks so, so hype. The one thing that fucking pisses me off is how Subaru continues to not ask these questions to these important characters that just leaking shit. And then the most annoying things are the ReZero Glazers who will never look at the show objectively and will defend and play devil's advocate for their favorite fucking author. Saying like, no, you would have been suspicious. You don't want to Shut the fuck up, retard. Any normal person can come to the conclusion that Subaru mentioning, how would you know the Witch of Pride, which is not a common knowledge. And no one's even assuming that Subaru even knows that it should. You're so brain dead. I cannot believe in the other videos, they cut content. The f and the other videos where I call these monkeys out, they go on fucking defending. No, you just don't understand. Shut the fuck up. I'm literally banning every single person playing devil's advocate. I don't want to hear a single fucking opinion about you monkeys, but that's it for me. This is obviously on hiatus and low key, like it may get dropped at this rate. I, I, if the performance is that poor, there is no point continuing to pump out content that no one cares about. But this is overall it. This anime got dropped because you guys just seem to not give a fuck about it. Don't tell me that Dragon Ball Daima is amazing. You are so blind and stupid if you think that the past three episodes has been anything but mid. It's getting carried by nostalgia. Nothing is happening. We're all waiting for the fucking fights, but that's just going to happen in probably 20 episodes. By the time then, no one's even watching that shit. These were all just good. Blue Lock and Tower of God showing us more potential. These were great. I genuinely think that Healer, who got banished from another party, even though the animation is dog shit doo-doo, it's not really on the same level of this, right? It's, it's actually a little bit better, slightly above average. But even then, the whole plot created by Margulis was so fun to watch. And of course, the peaks and I think that Damachi straight up takes the cake. The plot twist, Freya's plot twist, that shit fucking killed me. That, that shit is it, just so, so funny to me. But that's it from me. Here's our weeks of play uh, tier list. And oh, we know what the funniest thing is? The funniest thing is that every time I upload these videos, there's monkeys that hate watch me that have notifications on to dislike it immediately. That's the funniest part where you perceive my content in such a serious way that you're such a dedicated fan that you only help me grow. You are such a loser. You're such a pathetic subhuman. Like, like you spend your time being the most dedicated fan thinking your dislikes do anything. But it only sends more engagements to the algorithm. It literally, you're helping me. You are the most dedicated fan. And think about it. Why are you getting so mad? Why are you getting so mad at a random person's opinion online? It's because you perceive me on a pedestal. It's because my content is that compelling. And you have this cognitive dissonance in your brain where my opinions, because of the way you view me, and suddenly my opinions and calling your stupid fucking enemies trash is making you feel bad. But guess what? I'm not your fucking dad. Go get a fucking life.